So this uh, presentation I'm doing is basically going to be about reptiles and amphibians and their relationship to wetlands. Now, this isn't anything crazy, but a lot of you may not know some of the stuff in here, so you might learn something new. I don't know. So the main topics I'm going to be talking about are just reptiles and amphibians in general, how they use wetlands, and why wetlands are essential for some species of reptiles and amphibians. So as far as the sources for this presentation, I used a variety of them, but the main one I used was called Protecting Wetlands for Amphibian and Reptile Conservation by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Unless I otherwise state it, all of the pictures and videos in this presentation are mine, so they won't need any kind of credit due to them because they're mine, so. For most people, when you say the word swamp, it is not uncommon for the very first thing for their mind to go to is an image of a snake basking on a log, or turtles, or alligators basking on logs, or with their heads poking out of the water, or frogs jumping into the water as you're walking along the edge of the wetland. The two are very intertwined, alright? There's not a lot of ecosystems and biomes and habitats that really scream herps more than a swamp does. So before we get started on how they use the wetlands, I thought I would go ahead and, you know, just list some native Tennessee species of reptiles and amphibians that use swamps. So some of the poster child species of herps that live in the swamps in West Tennessee may include water snakes. There's various different species of them. They are actually non-venomous. They are not to be confused with cottonmouths that are venomous. There's about five different species of water snakes that you can find in the wetland habitats around West Tennessee. And of course, you also get cottonmouths, like I mentioned earlier. Now, cottonmouths have a very, very very bad disposition and it's not deserved. They don't chase or attack people like many, many, many different people say they will. Turtles. Tons and tons of turtles use swamps. Painted turtles are one of the most common turtles you're going to find in the swamps of Real Foot and in a lot of other places in West Tennessee as well. You get map turtles. Uh, around here you get the Mississippi map turtle. They're a very common swamp turtle. You also get snapping turtles. Probably everybody knows what a snapping turtle is, and the one around here that you see the most frequently is the common snapping turtle. Frogs. Some of the local frog species that you may hear or see in swamps in West Tennessee may include the green tree frog. Pretty much all of you all have probably heard one on a nice warm and rainy summer night. You also get bird voice tree frogs. They're actually a pretty reliant species on swamps, so if it weren't for swamps, bird voice tree frogs in particular would suffer pretty greatly. Some of the salamanders you may encounter around here may consist of smallmouth salamanders. You also get mole salamanders, you get spotted salamanders, you get marbled salamanders. But two of my favorite salamander species that rely very, very heavily on swamp habitat are amphiumas and sirens. These are a very, very lesser known known species of salamander. For the most part, they spend their entire lives underwater, and almost all the time, they're gonna be living in swamps. Now, you're unlikely to see one in Tennessee. It is possible they have been sighted, but I feel like I should put it out there anyway. American alligators. There is absolutely no reptile, or maybe even just animal, period, that makes people think of a swamp more than an American alligator. So now that y'all have a general understanding of some of the iconic poster child herp species that use wetland habitats, I'm going to talk about how they use them and why wetlands are necessary for those species survival. So one of the biggest benefits that a reptile or amphibian that chooses to live in a wetland has in comparison to reptiles and amphibians that choose to live in a more terrestrial environment is the fact that they have an extremely quick getaway from predators. Usually what you'll find with all of these species of reptiles and amphibians that I mentioned previously and plenty of others is that they are going to usually hang out very, very close to the water most of the time. And the reason for that, in part, is because all they have to do in order to get away from a predator is drop down from a log, drop down from a tree, drop down, you know, from a pile of rocks that's right on the side of the water. All they have to do is make one quick movement, boom, they're gone. 
all right? No predator is going to be able to get their hands on them. This is especially effective with swamps because the water in swamps is typically a little more murky, so it decreases the visibility of that reptile or amphibian to a predator after it enters the water. But even if it can, it's usually got about, oh geez, like 10 feet of uh, aquatic vegetation and roots and who knows what else underneath the water that it can go into. Once it gets in that stuff, it will disappear. There is no chance for a predator to get to it at that point. It's over. So that's one of the big reasons why reptiles and amphibians really benefit from wetlands is because if they choose to live in those areas, very, very easy to get away from predators, no problem. Also, obviously, it provides their food, all right? If we're talking water snakes, well, what do they eat? They eat frogs and fish. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if it weren't for wetlands, frogs and fish would not exist. So water snakes pretty much have to hang out by the water if they want food for the most part. So that show kind of explains itself. I mean, you know, alligators, what do they mainly eat? They mainly eat fish and turtles and, you know, things like that. They, for the most part, actually do not eat larger game. This is a common misconception. Alligators typically eat smaller things. That's why they are not usually a great threat to humans. In the meantime, the alligators are a great threat to humans is when we feed them and they lose their natural fear of us and they make that connection of food with humans and then an accident happens. But for the most part, alligators eat smaller things like fish, turtles, things like that. And obviously these are also things that pretty much have to live in wetlands to survive. Reproduction is another really big one. Amphibians in specific are known for this. Most species of amphibians would not be able to survive if it weren't for some kind of wetland habitat to support them. Almost every amphibian species is going to spend a major portion of their life in the water, and usually they're going to spend the rest of their lives not very far from water at all. Frogs and toads, for instance, obviously they, they mate, they lay eggs, and then those eggs turn into tadpoles, we all know that. And the tadpoles are reliant on water, they're like fish, they can't really live on land, so there has to be a water source nearby for amphibians to be able to reproduce, and that's one of the reasons that wetlands and swamps swamps are really important for amphibians. Now as far as the reptiles go, they generally lay their eggs or give birth to live young on land. They typically don't do it in the water, like turtles for instance. They actually don't have their babies in the water. They usually crawl up onto land, they dig a nest, and they lay their eggs into the nest, pretty close to the water generally. And then when those eggs hatch, the baby turtles come out, and the reason they do it relatively close to the water most of the time is so that the babies can then find the water really, really quickly. And that kind of goes back to the whole thing with wetlands being really, really effective for evasion to predators. The sooner that turtle can find the water, the less likely it is to get snagged by a heron or a hawk or a, a snake even, maybe. I mean, you know, it, there's all these different factors that kind of go into it, and you can see the interconnectedness of all of it. It's all a balance, and that's one of the ways that turtles and their reproduction kind of has to do with wetlands. So now that I've kind of basically laid out how those reptiles and amphibians use the aquatic ecosystems they live in, you can begin to see why they they rely on those habitats. So if a swamp were to get drained, a lot of those species of reptiles and amphibians that lived in the swamp could not adapt to life on land. Amphiumas and sirens, for instance, those species of salamander I was talking about earlier, they're fully aquatic. They're just like fish. If they are not in the water, they can't survive. Species like that, they will die if a wetland is drained. Same thing if it's polluted, all right? Pollution is really, really a big problem when it comes to wetland ecosystems, and it very, very negatively affects amphibians. As a lot of you may know, amphibians are what many call an indicator species, and that's because usually amphibians are some of the first animals to show signs of an impaired environment. And that's mainly because their chemical exchanges easily pass through their skin and to their organs really quickly. So if something is in the water that's bad, it's going to directly go through their skin and affect them much quicker than, say, a snake would, or, or a turtle would, or a bird would. So that's just about it. You know, this wasn't anything crazy or revolutionary or anything. This is basically just a general overview of A, some of the reptile and amphibian species that specifically use wetlands that live in West Tennessee around you and you could potentially encounter at any point. How they use those wetland habitats and why those wetland habitats are so important for those species survival in particular. So I hope you all have learned something cool. Uh, if not, at least enjoyed watching the video maybe. And with that, I will see you all later. Thanks for watching.